Today we have with us Bart Newberg, Chair of the Margo Initiative. Bart, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, happy to be there. Thanks, Bob. It's my pleasure to host you here today. Let's talk about uh, Margo, what it is, what led to the creation of uh, this uh, you know, piece of technology. Just give us uh, origin, history, story. So uh, Margo, uh, Margo Initiative, uh, what, what is it? Um, Margo Initiative is an, um, is an open source initiative that we, uh, that we host uh, under uh, the Linux Foundation. And uh, the intent of the Margo Initiative is to, um, to address the, the, the interoperability challenges uh, that are currently observed by the market. The market we're focusing on is the industrial automation market. And what are the specific interoperability uh, challenges? Because there are, uh, there's a vast range of interoperability challenges we're far from replacing uh, other initiatives focusing on areas. We're specifically focusing on interoperable orchestration at scale for applications and devices uh, at the edge. That, that is our focus area, the interoperability, uh, interoperable orchestration at scale. Um, we are uh, yeah, seeing gaps uh, through um, what we did as a market analysis, if you want to call it like that. Uh, that the market is today uh, often stuck. Customers are often stuck in their digital operations or digitalization of their operations uh, at the proof of concept stage where they see valuable typical software defined applications that do deliver value and it's proven out in their proof of concept, but they fail to make it applicable at scale in their organizations. Um, and that is the area where, where Margo uh, focuses on. So the specific focus of Margo is uh, automation at the edge. Is that correct? It is It is correct. I mean, it is um, the industrial automation space at the edge, acknowledging that when you pronounce the word edge, you automatically associate it with the word cloud. And that's, that's natural, that that's normal, that's good. That's how we also see it. But we do our, our area of activity being in the edge with where necessary uh, interactions with the cloud. Uh, there, there are going to be things that definitely when you talk about digitalizing operations, you cannot exclude cloud from the equation. But we're focusing on that particular pain point that is identified. Well, what if my workloads, my applications are not hosted in the cloud by a cloud provider, but when they're hosted on premise with in, in my organization, in um, in the area where, where I have responsibility, which is like on premises, like in the vicinity of the manufacturing plants, actually in the manufacturing plants, that are places where there is where there is today a challenge in the market to have that in heterogeneous install base have that managed and deployed at scale those applications. The reason I was asking the question was, first of all, as you said, cloud, I mean, everything goes through cloud no matter what you do. But when you say edge, how would you define it? Because edge could mean different things for different folks. But when we look at industrial edge, what are we talking about here? Well, the edge for, for industrial uh, organizations or manufacturing organizations are, call it the, the hosting devices, the compute devices that are hosting modern workloads, modern applications. So when we talk in Margo about application definitions that are applications that are uh, typically uh, containerized, uh, but we are seeing also evolutions already upcoming, but like the modern way of applications, how they are packaged, and they need until someone um, uh, proves me the the, the, the opposite. Uh, they still need a compute surface to, to be valuable. You need a computer to say it in a blunt way to execute them. But computers today are more than just a piece of hardware with an operating system. They typically have a, a runtime environment, as we call it for containers, a container runtime environment. And that is seen as a node, as a device that can host those workloads. Um, that is what we're focusing on. We're, for example, not focusing on devices as sometimes might be understood in the industrial space as like a, an I.O. device or, or a, 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 
uh, variable frequency drive. Uh, that are not the type of uh, devices we're focusing on. It, it needs to have some ability to execute, <coughs> I would say, typical software workloads that are that are like written by independent app developers, uh, specifically focusing on, uh, yeah, on, on as I mentioned, uh, similar to containerized workloads, yes. Can you talk about some of the use cases of Edge that Margo initiative is targeting? And number two is that what kind of interoperability challenges that you see th that are there that needed this solution. So I want to understand, you know, what kind of devices or, you know, of course, you know, when we talk about edge, we're talking about and what kind of interoperability challenges that are there? Well, the devices uh, scalability is, is something we want to clearly take into account. We are acknowledging that for different organizations, the type of devices at the edge are going to be different, as you mentioned, can be rather powerful uh, edge devices, like call it remote data centers. Again, the, the common denominator is it's on-premise and it will be the, the organization that will define how constrained that will need to go. The, the, the closer typically you get to the physical world, like in a machine that is part of this manufacturing line, you're going to have a, a rather more constrained device, but still it's going to execute a few containerized workloads, but it could scale down to like just that very optimized, but highly demanding um, device, de device sitting in a highly demanding, env demanding environment, very specific industrial environment that cooling wise, uh, hazardous location wise, has some specifics that he can cope with, but it still needs to be seen from an app development point of view as like, this is a container runtime environment in which I can be running there. So that's from a scaling point of view. And Margo wants to have that um, ability to address the different scale of and the variability of edge devices. But with that common denominator, yes, they're going to be connected. Yes, they're going to be on-premise at point number one. And what is the challenge? And that might be a challenge. This may be particular for the uh, operations technologies. That is heterogeneity. Whereas you might have in other industries, or not only in other areas, and it could be industries, that you have an ability to be mono vendor, like you as an organization might be able to solve your particular needs with sourcing it from one specific like supplier. This is not the case if you are industrial manufacturing. The reality that we have heard and seen, I mean, founding members of Margo have seen that through their relationship with their customers, a manufacturing plant, not a single of the customers we have, have been able to build that by doing that with only one partner, with only one supplier. There are going to be the reality is of a manufacturing plant. You have, it's so specialized that you have for each area, uh, they're going to take the best in breed solution. That's what they want and that's what they need to do. So you have that necessity to have a wide variety of suppliers that in the end need to create an integrated manufacturing line. Well, if you now transpose that to the digitalization of the operations and you want to again take advantage from the go back like 100 years ago was all mechanic, then electricity came into the game, then there was a first level automation and now it's all about software defined manufacturing processes, you're still going to have the the suppliers that are good in certain aspects of that complete manufacturing process. Meaning you're going to have to make you as an end user, you as an, a plant owner, you're going to have to make that all work together. You're, you're just not going to be able to find that one single company that is going to do it for you unless it is a system integrator. But then the, 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 the pressure is on his shoulder. He's then the one that has to bring the system together. Well, that bringing the system together, again, works nicely if you have the time to do it in a proof of concept. But once then the question of the CEO is, great, I see the value, you have proven it out, go and deploy it to the five lines of each of my 70 plants I have worldwide, and you don't have a scalability answer, it's not going to work. And that is the particular, the very particular challenge pain point that with Margo, we want to address. When it comes to interoperability, of course, sometimes, uh, depending on the industry, there are certain industry, uh, you know, standards are there that do try to 
you know of course inter standardize things so that interoperability is not a problem but in this case uh, is that not enough and what additional value is Margo Initiative bringing to the industry, not only for the whole ecosystem, which could include vendors, players, and also users? For the users, it is having that, call it assurance, that when they are looking for the intrinsic business value of specifically applications, software-defined applications that would help their um, digitalization uh, efforts, that they can once they have identified the value that they can subsequently have the assurance that okay i can now go and deploy it in my full organization without that that is a kind of a big question mark like will this actually work i have seen it working in this laboratory environment in this very specific test environment in plant one now i want to go and deploy it to plant two to plant 99 is this really reducing that risk of going for digitalization of operation? How does also open source enable collaboration? Yeah. Well, what we identified was that this, this area that Margo wants to focus on, that piece of the technology stack, what we call the enabling piece, the thing that is not making suppliers differentiate from each other. It's more like have that just work together and on top of that being able to differentiate if you want to we believe that if one wants to uh, address that that the most productive way if i want to call it like that would to, to be it in an to do that in an open setting in an open source setting where you clearly say this is not where we want to um make a private club or a private team that is going to kind of focus on this. No, I mean, if you want to get the broadest adoption, make it for everyone comfortable to contribute, that everybody understands the rules. It's like, it's open source. I mean, you just do it for the benefit of having that solution there, not for differentiation, not for monetization on top of it. And allow uh, anyone with the lowest barrier of entry to contribute to that. It's not about you need to be a big organization supplier to be able to participate in it. No, not only suppliers. You can even have, as a customer, uh, maybe see some interest and have interest in participating in that. And we have seen successes in technologies we are uh, looking towards to either bring into the OT space, OTify, like uh, examples could be uh, Kubernetes that we have seen very successfully working and growing in an open source environment geared towards the IT market or the IT space. We have seen that is working very well in open source. We said like th this is the way we want to go forward to address this particular topic, although maybe not very um, historically uh, done yet in industrial automation. We feel as we are on the yeah, edge, <laughs> say it again, on the frontier between IT and OT, we said like, let's take best practices from what I, where IT has been able to address enabling pain, pain points in the enabling space through open source approaches and do it in a similar way. Uh, now also for the OT space. What kind of community is being built around uh, the Margo Initiative, the companies who are involved from the very beginning? Yeah, um, well, the community, um, as I mentioned, an open community, but you have to start with, with, with a few to get this kind of um, created. Um, we, um, we kind of started to look for like, hey, how can we bring some typical profiles of suppliers that are serving in the slow automation space and, and see if there would be a, a common um, understanding and reading of the pain points in the market. And, and we found that kind of um, consensus on what pain points were, how we could solve them between, uh, between Rockwell Automation and my company, um, Siemens, uh, the um, ABB group, including BNR, the Schneider Electric group, uh, including uh, Aviva. Um, we also found that with uh, Capgemini and with, um, and with Microsoft, uh, that with those six companies, we had the, um, the feeling that there was an alignment uh, on, hey, we need to get this solved. And that's 
started in like doing some uh, informal discussions first, but very quickly we came to the conclusion we need to bring this very soon and very quickly in an open setting so that this is not just the six of us um, thinking this is a good idea to solve it. We want to reach out as soon as possible to like more equal spears of us in that are serving the industrial automation markets to go and address it. And um, yeah, we, we uh, three weeks ago uh, made our first public announcement. We had two weeks ago at Hanover a, a live session, a panel discussion. And, and as a result, we have already the data and Intel that are now uh, formally part as uh, as a steering member together with us six. So, so I would even say the history, less of an importance, uh, the importance is how we move forward. And we have deliberately not yet come up with like, hey, these six companies have have kind of defined it, take it or leave it approach. No, this is like we have given a head start that there are on our GitHub uh, repos already some uh, drafts of proposed system designs. And we want to take that as a starting point to have and continue the discussion to go towards deliverables and reference implementation an open specification a test on compliance toolkit but all those three components are deliberately not finished yet we want this to be a collaborative effort where there is consensus on what is it that we want to use as an uh, as an answer to the to the pain points but that's a bit of history where it came from but we're like really looking towards like where we're going towards and and getting that that broader adoption uh, from the market uh, and also the support and the contributions from those that are active in the industrial automation space. What are some of your long-term and short-term goals? Well, the short-term goals uh, uh, goals are straightforward. We want to get um, adoption. Adoption, having uh, more contributors um, sitting around the table and uh, defining uh, the, the deliverables. That is, that is really target number one. Um, because we feel like without having that consensus uh, and that broader support, um, this will likely not be the, the right approach. As I said, not something like a small group is doing and then trying to get when it's all finished, the consensus of the, of the remaining uh, suppliers. Now we want to go right from the start getting that consensus there. Um, and we have then as a, uh, a medium term to uh, have that uh, reference implementation evolve. We will in the coming weeks be uh, proposing experiments with blueprints on the GitHub repo so that people can see uh, that we take what we call the code first approach, meaning going to like show by example, like how things can be done in parallel allowing adopters to adopt it and yes have the freedom for implementation for which we need an open specification that defines how is an api working and then as a third priority would be having the uh, compliance test toolkit so that adopters can have the confidence that what they are developing is compliant with the specification and the best way we believe to do that is through an open source type of uh, compliance testing toolkit so that everyone can go on based on a self-service basis but with visibility and transparency indicate hey i have built my solution it's compliant with the toolkit and here is the readout of the test results publicly available so that not only themselves they feel confident in it but also at a later point when somebody wants to for example acquire their solution they can go and check hey was this actually did that actually pass the tests yes this it is available so that are kind of short-term long-term or medium-term objectives. Barb, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the Margo Initiative. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I would love to chat with you when there are more you know, you know, updates to the initiative. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rob. It was a pleasure to be here.